Hey everyone, Surfer here, and we're back with more Stanley Parable. Last time, we exploded. It wasn't that fun. I actually almost made it out. I think I did, like, one of the first endings or whatever. So, I'm guessing you would just leave. So, we're not going to do that again. Uh, this time, we're going to disobey completely. Whatever he says. N. Chapter 1? Why does it say chapter 1? I don't think there's chapters, is there? This is the story of a hmm. man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company oh, in a checkers. big building where what he happened? was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Should we listen to this again? Orders came to him yeah, through we'll a monitor. Because, you know, if you watched my first one, you could go and, you know, do that. Stanley decided to go to the staff line the to check on his crew workers. Nah. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. Mm -hmm. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walk back in the right direction. And like that, he was back on track. Oh. This time, Stan... Wait, what? As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. Okay, is there any way I could, like, not go to my boss? I can go downstairs. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, of admitting that he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, was it really worth taking that risk? All because he believed everyone had disappeared? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Everyone I know simply vanishing out of the blue, there's almost no other explanation for it. And a nagging fear began to creep up in his mind questions that had been there all along. He just hadn't put his finger on them yet. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Was he just walking around in circles? Where am I, he thought. And the more he found himself unable to answer these questions, the more questions continued to arise until he came to the issue that had been slowly bawling until he could ignore it no longer. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Suddenly, every door slammed shut. Oh no, I'm like no Stanley screamed. I no. need to get out of here. I need to know that there's something out there. Something out I need there. to know it's not just it's all in my head. head. And he screamed and clutched at his skull as the voice grew harsher and the music in the background rose higher and higher. And then, moments before collapsing to surround the ground, Stanley Clinic clenched his fist fists and, and screamed dream to Sorry, anyone like. who might be listening. <laughs> listening. So it's cool though. I'm not real. I'm not, I'm real. not real. Don't believe any of it. Don't None believe of any, any of it. None of it's real. And then everything went black. That was intense. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She got dressed, went to work, clocked in, clocked out, and then she walked home. But her walk on this day was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. 
Moments after seeing him, she would turn, run to the nearest police station and call for an ambulance. But for just a few brief second seconds, she oh merely God, sailed God, there, kind of unable to move. The tragedy was not the death of a single a person. person. It was Tell that she so would never know his own story. story. Never hear in his own words what had happened to him, or what he believed had happened to him. For to know these things would be to exist inside the head of the man himself. So all she could do was observe from a distance and pity him. But Mariella had places to be and people to meet with, very mm, important mm, people, yeah. whose impressions of her would affect her career and indeed the rest of her life. She stood there for only a moment, looking, looking at the body, and then she ran. So that was uh, an actual ending or something? But for some reason that one had credits. Well, let's do one more. We're going to do one more and we'll do it right now because that was, I think that was like really short. So we're going to skip the beginning because, you know, we already saw that in the first place. Even though, you no, know, we're holding checkers and lag. But, you know. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two do open do doors, this was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into You're the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the spanked. elevator and the no. doors opened, no. he stepped inside no. and pushed the button to go up. Okay. Yeah, right. Damn. Even though... There's no... Oh, practice. Stanley. Oh, Stanley. <laughs> you know, you really aren't going anywhere. And I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone? Give me a chance and just let me tell the story I want to tell, hmm? Hmm, I would not trust him. I'd be like, girl, no, no. Because what would happen? I would just end up walking there and he'd be like, boom, dead. Now <laughs> listen carefully. This, this is, is important. important. Stanley walked through the red door. I don't know. It's kind of red. But it's kind of purpley. The blue one looks so much better. Sorry. Aha. Uh -huh. Perhaps oh. you misunderstood. Stanley walked oh, through the, the red, red door. door. Now. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. Narrator, you can go. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh. <laughs> so there's no more entry door. What the heck's going on over there? It looks like someone peed on the ceiling. Mm, probably not the smartest thing to do, pee on ceilings. Looks like someone did that too. Or mold. Well, beauty. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Wow. You see? Checkers! It's nothing. <laughs> No one's even built this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. It's just a bunch of skybox and dev wall textures. That's it. Is this I what like you were looking for? for? Was it worth ruining the story I'd written out for you? Textures. I put a lot of time into that, and now you... Well, here you are now, just looking at nothing. To think it's that nothing. that's all I needed Stop. to make in the first place, just a whole lot of nothing, and you would have been happy. Well, hey, you still need a little something to do. Am I right? Here, let me load up another map. 
See if there's something in here that'll keep you occupied. <sighs> ah, here's one. Let's boot this up. We'll see if you like it. Uh, that's kind of weird that they can just like, okay. Kind of creepy. What if they put like cry of fear or something? Ugh, I would die. But that's for Half-Life 1, I think. I try. I wanted to play Cry of Fear. Don't I don't know why I do, but I did because it seemed creepy and scary and stuff. But I'd probably end up peeing my pants. Yeah, this definitely seems. Oh, spooks! I'm scared. Yeah, I'm lagging a bit. Well, Stanny, is this any better? I don't know why it would be. This map wasn't even made for you. At least I created a world specifically with you in mind. I wanted to make you a leading man. Oh, this one will. I'm afraid you're on your own mm -hmm. there. Hello, Mom? Mom? Can you get me? Hello? Hello? Mm -hmm. Girls these days. Um, hmm. Trash. Um, what do we want to take with us? Nah. Can, no. No. With kids. Yep. I am busy, a busy man. I need to go to work. No, come on. <sighs> Pretty sure that's the wrong way, but... Oh, a boot. Let's go, boot. I like Stanley the was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got his job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That, or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Hey, drugs are bad. Don't do drugs. But hookers... Hookers can be very lovely ladies. Yeah. Yeah, I met a hooker before. Uh, her name was Brandy. She was she was lovely. A lovely lady. Mm, this way? Maybe? Where do we go, boo? Oh, this way. Security. Oh my god, I'm lagging pretty bad. I don't think I would be lagging this bad if I was recording. If I wasn't recording, sorry. Blood. Um. Boot. You you can sit on here. I want this chair. I, I can't sit on that chair. Hold up, sport. I spent so long talking about you. Why don't we just take a break from that and talk about something else for a change? Let's see. Well, according to Wikipedia, more than 90% of the night sharks caught off northeastern Brazil contain mercury concentrations higher than that considered safe by the local government. Oh, now, this is fascinating. Don't you want to know more about the night sharks? Yes. Oh, no, of course not. All you want to hear about is yourself, isn't it? No. Well, fine. You haven't listened to me once so far. I can't expect you to turn that around now, can I? I'll, I'll, I'll listen to you. I don't want to take your chair. I'm sorry, chair. You seem like a lovely, a, a nice chair. You're dirty. You're a dirty chair. Look at that. You're super dusty. Boot, Boot's dirty, but he's cool. Boots, you're not. You're dusty. He's not. He's just a little old. Oh, okay, Boot. <laughs> oh, I can take Boot with me. I don't even have to do that. I thought I had like. Oh, that seems like a long drop. Boot, go first. Are you Dusty Boot? Oh. <sighs> Is this the end of the line? I don't suppose this was a particularly fulfilling experience for you, considering not a single art aspect in this map was created with you in mind. But hey, you're a creative kid. I bet you can come up with a story about this place and why you're in it. And while you're doing that, why don't you think up an ending too? Because you certainly won't find one here. I'm afraid that's the long and short of it. This room and these walls are all you get. 
Maybe the story ends when you decide you can't live in this futuristic, science fiction dystopia world, and you gallantly commit suicide. Or maybe you stand in this spot for all of eternity to guide and greet other travelers like yourself. Wait. Boat, Hold on, I... what, are you, what are you doing? Boat. Oh, there's light. I can't, I have to, I can't leave without Boot. It's too dark. I can't see anything. I'm sorry, Boot. I have to go on without you. Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. I'm sorry, narrator. I have to go. I can't come back up. Unless you spawn me up, but I don't think you're gonna do that. Write a story without me? You can't do it, you know that. I can I can be whatever I want, narrator. I can be a writer. You're not the only one. Ow. What the heck? Could I, could I just pl play the map? I want to see if there's more to this. It's sad, I oh know, my gosh. but all stories That's must scary. come to an end. Of course, they say it's the journey that truly matters and not the destination, and I like that idea. To think we might value the paths we walk as much as the places they lead us. Now, I don't know what sort of story you've ciphered out of that world you've made for yourself, but I hope that being the leading man was everything it's cracked up to be. I know it can be a little hard getting around without someone looking over your shoulder, but this is simply the nature of freedom. Besides, I haven't really gone anywhere. Maybe you don't want a guide, but I think I'll always have a place here at the end of every story. I'll step in and wrap things up with a nice piece of dialogue and a reflection on life that makes sense of whatever path you've chosen to walk. And for now, I'm happy to be the destination instead of the journey. But only for now. Well, that was different. Um, again, that's Stanley, Stanley Parable. Uh, I don't know. If you want more, tell me. I'll try a different thing. I'll try to figure out if we press, like, up. Or if I, uh, disabled the generator. Uh, so... Uh, like and favorite if you enjoyed, subscribe to become a meteor. It really helps, and I love it. Love you guys. You're awesome. And, uh, and I really appreciate you guys. So, see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye!